Alan, um, how are you? I see, I see I, you're sitting in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it's the way to my house in the forest, yes. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> Lovely to see you, and it's really nice to see both of you as well. I think we met all the way back in 2004 at, at Tempest, if I'm not mistaken, um, which is just, you know, um, uh, Emmanuel and I were discussing how we both need to change the prescription on our glasses because uh, <laughs> we, we need reading low. Well, I need bifocals now, which is a particularly um, uh, inconvenient, um, especially when you're trying to look at your watch, you know, <laughs> but, but I guess that's the reality. But um, I, I, guys, I love what you're doing um, with with the, these collaborations. And I have to say the, the triptych that you guys created this year, especially with an all new case design, you know, which has got that great grade two, um, grade five combination of titanium, which has got those wonderful skeletonized lugs. Um, and then the creativity of, of just the designs um, across all three of the watches, uh, the the Semen, which I guess is a day date watch, but it's, you know, um, it's got a very entertaining way of displaying the day, uh, the, the regulator, and then of course the Monobusher chronograph. I think they're amazing. So like, I know you guys, your collaboration reaches back um, to, to Roman Jerome. Um, and Alan, I know you, you also have done collaborations, for example, with Max Buser. Um, tell us a little bit about your story, how you guys met, um, and why you shared kind of a similar uh, vision for, for watchmaking, right? That's a good question. I don't know. Do you remember, Alan, when we met the first time, actually? I'm, I'm trying... Years ago, my dear, years ago. Yeah, yeah that's for sure. I mean, but, but let's not focus too much on the years. <laughs> we're, not, we're, not, we're, not, we're not getting younger now, but I, I think we, we yeah, look, this, it's, it, let's not forget that. It, it's a very, um, it, the watch industry is an ecosystem. At the end of the day, it's, an, it, it's, uh, it's a few people. It's not that many. You end up meeting all of them at a certain stage. And I think we just, uh, the first time we, we met or the few times we met, we understood that we share quite a lot of similar thoughts, uh, similar visions, similar sensibilities uh, on the industry as a whole, but also on products, also where and how this uh, industry uh, uh, could or should evolve. Uh, that's one thing. I mean, and we, we, by having just very informal discussions, we, we understood that we are pretty much aligned with Alain uh that we share really a lot of similar thoughts and then for me um, alain i mean at the end of the day it has been the pioneer in, in independent watchmaking today it's all about an independent watchmaking it's all about brands uh who who have been um, i would say consistent over the years built uh, build it consistently and i think uh, for me it's always clear that alain has an important role within this industry as this pioneer, as I would say this person who really, uh, you know, somehow initiated uh, independent uh, watchmaking. And uh, for me, uh, it's part of what I consider uh, not a duty, but the responsibility to, 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 to uh, pay tribute and, 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 and somehow uh, keep the memory, if I may say so, present for people who really have uh, a say, a say in this industry, and should continue to be, uh, should be, should continue to express themselves in this industry. I would say, uh, recall that uh, even if I don't remember the first time we met, uh, in which exhibition uh, we start to talk with Manuel, I would say that uh, since uh, watchmaking, as uh, Manuel just mentioned, is a small world, it's also a place where. You have the best, the good, and the bad. I would say, and uh, and uh, what I first shared with uh, Manuel, it's a certain sensibility uh, with uh, modern and contemporary art. I would say it's, it's an yeah, artist, actually. person who have uh, many things in common. Really, uh, I would say sensibility, but I would say that the most important because now everybody. Uh, is a mouthful of a world collaboration. I'm starting to hate this word. I would say, first of all, it's the ability to, to trust each other. And uh, uh, Manuel is among the very few in the watchmaking industry able to act and behave as a, a true artistic director in watchmaking. He is an AD. With what what does it mean? 
So this is not a, a, a when I would say creation is really a, a, lo, a lonesome approach. You have, of course, it could give me some insight or what uh, this brand would like to have. But when you have a chance with Manuel or Max to have a carte blanche, uh, it's one thing to say you have carte blanche. It's another thing to know if you really have carte blanche. And in fact, uh, 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 creation is not uh, uh, something I want to do it uh, by myself alone. This is a, a, a current discussion, ongoing discussion, I would say, Waco. You see, and this discussion enlightened me, and also, uh, <laughs> like any art director, Manuel has the, the gift to uh, push me <laughs> out of my comfort zone. And this is not because I have one a style by myself. Uh, there is no uh, new uh, area to explore, and I think this is the true exchange even collaboration. But now uh, he helped me to find my way in other territories and I hope on the future to come because the past is over, as he just mentioned. And I, I think there is a true uh, field ahead of us where we could act uh, to have more artistic approach in watchmaking, not only a word for marketing papers, but a true way even on the economical star, uh, level, where we could uh, create uh, watches the same way you could uh, write uh, a novel. Let's say, actually, it's editing. And yes. uh, thanks to Luera, we started a journey. And uh, maybe the journey will be different. But we, we the success showed us that the most important are readers the watch wearers. And if we are able to tell a nice story, uh, uh, a story made of, uh, based on experience, savoir-faire, and also uh, confidence, uh, the, the, the response is there. So yes, an artistic director is for me one of the future paths we have to explore with Manuel. But this is something <laughs> I, I just expressed to, uh, with you for the very first time. But I would say, <clears throat> now, what means collaboration? I don't know what does it mean. Uh, uh, let's say when uh, Manuel asked me to commission a collection for Wira, it's perfect, because uh, he explained to me strategy, and I was very pleased to, to fit in, in that strategy. But, and also, uh, it was a sort of test market to see how will be the response. So actually, the good price points, uh, quality wise, innovation, inspiration, some tongue in cheek, and that's it. <laughs> and execution. Of course, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> it, no, this, you know, this is your domain of expertise, Manuel. <laughs> so let's go back to what you were saying, Manuel, in terms of, of what, um, what Alain represents as a pioneer, I think is, is incredibly important. You know, In the context of the 80s, for example, you had watch brands who were you know, really rebuilding the whole culture of mechanical watchmaking, but in general, were doing it in a very backwards looking way. Right? Mm -hmm. They were taking complications for pocket watches, they were taking the iconography of pocket watches, and they were transplanting it to, to wrist watches. And then you had a guy who was the first one really to, to connect uh, mechanical watchmaking um, to art, to, to architecture, Design. Which is mm -hmm. uh, to geometric forms, to color, to this sort of vibrancy of modern language. Which, is, which was really incredible. Now, what's really remarkable for me to see is when I look at the, um, the three watches that you've launched, actually even the regulator, which you did in 2019, the language of Silberstein, <laughs> it's so cool even today. And somehow it's almost like it's perfect even to, for today because we all need to be cheered up, right? <laughs> you know, like, like we've all gone through this seismic kind of like experience where everyone's felt this existential malaise and they're a little bit feeling alienated and they're feeling a bit depressed in one way or the other. And your watches made everyone smile. And I think it kind of reminded people how important that language was. You know, do you feel as if that, that Alan's language, you know, his signature is still the perfect language for today? Well, I think it, <clears throat> for sure. I mean, it, it's 
the beauty of Alain's design is they are timeless. And even if they, uh, to a certain extent, are quir- sorry, Alain, if I say this, quirky, colorful, uh, special, uh, to a certain extent, they, they, they basically, um, uh, how do you say, they, they basically go through time very nicely. And I think this, this to find a design language or to find a sort of aesthetic that is both um, spot on and timeless is very, very difficult. And Alain has a bit, uh, has a bit this this capacity of 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 being in this kind of spot on but 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 uh, long, long longevity uh, logic, and there's also a reason I mean that I worked with Alain because I, I just you know when you when you know a little bit about watches when you meet people where you, uh, I always bumped into one or the other collector saying oh I still have this Anna Silberstein I love it. Um, th- there are not many icon- iconic watches that even though the, I would say different elements have changed their destiny that still are su- still have such a, a strong foothold. And I think Alain is probably the one, one of the, the maybe with the Ikepod uh, original design of Mark Newson somehow. Yeah, these are, one too. Exactly. These are these icons that even 10 years, 20 years after people remind because they were so strong or they have something, some strong, uh, and for me, this was important. I'm a, and I must say, I was luckily enough. I did the first experience with Alain on on on, uh, on RJ, and I did a mistake because I tried to put Alain into <laughs> the product and not put the product around Alain. And right. um, uh, and uh, and uh, I mean, we sold the watches, but it wasn't it wasn't an extraordinary success. It was, a six, it, was not, it was not to what I expected because I understood that at, at the end of the day, my role within the whole thing is, is to, to, to push Alain to, to not forget, um, you know, an artist or a designer like Alain sometimes has, the, has the, uh, the, how do you say that, the tiredness of his own creations, okay? Yeah. Um, and tends to say, okay, but I've done, <laughs> I've done this over and over again. And, and my and in this particular and I think why we have been so efficient on the regulator but also on the triptych is simply that I managed to push Alain back to what I think was his strongest uh, identity pieces and, and and not let him not let him uh, uh, basically not let him out too, too much into uh, into experimental things. Uh, although, that, <laughs> although at the end of the day, it's, it's been very experimental because, because I just gave him confidence to understand that sometimes that what he has or what he, what he created is something that he needs to stand for, to be, to be proud of. Uh, and I think this is also something, Alain, we never talked about that, but to, 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 to just, there is Anna Silberstein style that is unique and that will remain forever. And this is something that for me was very important that we keep that Alain Silberstein style. And, and I, had, I had a bit of a fight internally with Louis A.R. at the beginning because, because obviously they were scared of, well, but now we're becoming the Louis, uh, we're com- becoming the Alain Silberstein brand. I said, like, no, we're not. This, a collaboration for me is exactly that thing. Is, it, 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 it's a sort of platform where we recreate something that's in both interest and the, 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 one should not take over the other uh, even if eventually with the design language it does, the, still the brand benefit, both brand, both yes. entities benefit very well from each other. And I think we, we really manage this. And I would even say with, within the whole collaborative ecosystem, and I'm not saying <clears throat> video games or Marvel or, or, or things like this, that, that, that we know very well. And, and when I talk about real, like a collaboration, there's not been so so many collaborations that really were as efficient as this one, and I think this is one of the reasons of success, because and as Anna very uh, intelligently said before, it's often the brand, especially in the watch industry, where brands are very scared of getting out of their comfort zone, where where where, where this idea of collaboration excites them, but to extent that they control it, and I, th- I think the fact that I didn't try to control. Alain, but just guide Alain, uh, I think uh, was one of the reasons of the success of this collaboration. And, and I have not seen a lot of, again, collaborations within this industry that has been, that have had this kind of effect. 
because it is the element, the, the basic element of collaboration, basically. But that's what I love about it is when you look at the watches, you you see the iconic, you know, design language of Alan Silberstein. You, it's like when you put on a Miles Davis album, you want to hear kind of blue, right? Like mm -hmm. it's, it's the, you know, and, and when I look at um, the, the design language that Alan created, it reminds me a lot of like um, Keith Haring, right? Who mm -hmm. was, you yes. know, a seminal artist who created a specific art form. And that art form continues to be a classic today, right? I mean, it was, you know, sort of iconoclastic when it was launched, it was edgy, but today it's, it's become a classic. And I think that's that's wonderful that you, you know, you compelled uh, Alain to, to give him freedom, but said, let's be iconic. So, let, okay, so let's go to 2019. And maybe I'll start with you, Alain. I know, so Manuel uh, was telling me that he had joined the board of Louis Arard, uh in 2019, um, and I guess, Sorry? Uh, wait, wait, not not the board. I basically joined as a consultant first. Uh, ba basic, basically, basically did the strategy for them. And then obviously, uh, once the strategy was established, they said, okay, but who's going to implement this strategy? And I said, oh, my, it's really honestly, I said, oh, but the strategy is good. You should find somebody to implement it. And I said, yeah, but we don't have anybody. I said, okay, I'll do it. So <laughs> that's how I ended up in the board because I didn't. I, I thought that the strategy was good enough. Uh, I was quite. I must say, I was quite excited with the strategy that I pulled up. And then I said, okay, uh, I want to be sure that the strategy is well implemented, and that's why. I, well, that's the reason why I joined the board, basically. Uh, otherwise, probably I wouldn't have. And in the context of, of 2019, you didn't have that much time, right? So, um, Ala, you know, tell me, like. Okay, you've got a regulator, which is, if you look at the Louis Ara regulator, it looks like a regulator, but it doesn't look like your watch at all. So talk to me about the transformation you made oh. with the design approach that you made to create that watch. Oh, Rico, I have to ask the permission of uh, Manuel to give you some insights. So I just received a phone call from Manuel sitting uh, here. I have a, a com commando style. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, I basically, I basically, I will, uh, let's let's say uh, then I let Alain get the thing. So basically, I'm I'm, I'm joining. Uh, so so we are in Basel, and uh, they asked me if I can spend one or one or two days with them at the fair. So I do, and I get up at the booth, and I look at this, and I'm like, and I see the clients, and I see uh, the disappointment, and and I see it's just going nowhere. But, and I'm like, okay. Okay, I think we got to accelerate the strategy a little bit because otherwise we're not going to make it. And I was like, and, and I was just surprisingly enough, I was just sitting with the Japanese uh, and, and I just told them, look, I'm going to do collaborations. And then they say, okay, okay. So we're going to do collaborations with, uh, with watchmakers that have a signature, with contemporary artists, with designers, architects, with the ecosystem. I mean, all, all the things that I had uh, in my mind and then said, yeah, yeah. And then I said, okay, these guys are not going to react. I have to pull out something that they didn't think of. So I just, just naturally said, okay, I'm going to do a collaboration with Alan Silberstein. And then they said, oh. <laughs> so there was the, the, the only moment of my Basel Fair experience where suddenly I saw some emotion happening in, in the client's face. And I said, okay, I, I got to make this happen. So while we were at the meeting, I called Alan and said, look, yeah. Alan, uh, we, have, we have four months you got to pull out something before the end of the year because otherwise we're basically done. So, uh, so you that you challenged me, I tell you. Yeah. So that was we started. How it started. At that time, he told me here I have an existing case which is very neat. So, but try to do something special for a limited edition. So, uh, <laughs> and so, yes, let's do it. And the, the, the real point is sometimes, and you never know why, even if you already work, uh, uh, let's, let's face it, uh, since the late, uh, it was in 20, 2010 or 11, I start to work on some uh, new uh, design for watches. And unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to, to make it in watches and uh, a, regula a regulator was for me something very interesting because this is another way to read the time and uh, it was quite challenging but easy i tell you frankly 
easy because uh, everything was, uh, I, I, in fact, nobody knows, and I, I don't have to mention, but uh, I work very fast. <laughs> very, I had the, the idea, I think, about the, some hour after. You're too, you're too fast sometimes, Anna, too fast because. Yes, but my. Uh, no, my, but I say this in a, in a nice way. I say this in uh, a very nice way. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm working quite fast and uh, manual response are faster. So uh, at the end of the day, we are working very <laughs> good on that. Uh, I, think, I, think, I think the interesting thing is that I don't know why we knew we had an urgency. Alan was very efficient. We were very efficient the way we worked. And I think we, we, the design, we, we made it in, uh, I think, in, the, in two days, right? Yes. Alan? Yes. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. No, so, but, so guys, oh please, go ahead, go ahead, Alan. No, just to say, sometimes uh, the, the the idea is coming very quickly, but after it takes uh, weeks to finalize uh, the prior uh, idea. Please go. So, ahead. I would like to know the reaction of. Well, I know the reaction of all the 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 audience and the collectors, but I would also like to know the reaction of the brand. So, like, <laughs> what, you, <laughs> what, what what was the reaction when you showed them the watch, and 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 were you then really happy by the fact that everyone went crazy for this watch. Well, look, look, I, I didn't personally, I didn't ex expect, uh, expect it to be that successful because, uh, you know, the, the brand, let's say it this way. And I think that was the interesting thing. I mean, the, the, the big advantage of Louis R, it was, uh, I would say, um, somehow untouched mid-price, mid-price brand that, was concentrating on trying to offer a sort of very fair price uh, price value proposition uh, with a quite substantial distribution, but nothing really exciting about the brand. And I think this was an advantage because uh, the, the, the base was there to put in a bit of, um, one could say magic uh, creation, a bit of, uh, a bit of a craziness. Uh, and, the, and obviously <clears throat> the big advantage I had in this situation is the brand was desperate to find a solution for the future. And it's a constellation. At the end of the day, I think it was this constellation of a brand that needed, uh, us that wanted, and Alain that somehow uh, pulled up the right thing at the right moment in a very qu quick uh, period of time. And it, it's just an alignment of, uh, of planet uh, at this particular moment. And I think it, it just... I th they, they still haven't understood the success uh, of what we did because, because you know, I, it's it's very interesting. Um, I st we started to, I, 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 we started to see the effect. Every, everybody wanted the watches, and they were still in the same habits of of the way they distributed uh, the whole thing. So I started to change that too, mm -hmm. and um, we started to sell online in in, in March last year. We did in the year one, I think it was 38% uh, of our business online. And this year we're at 75% of our business online. And I'm not saying I want to do only online. It's just that the reactivity of the consumer, the collectors, the people was so strong that we, we, we and the, the, the reaction of most of the existing retailers, not the one that we are changing now of the existing retailers was so slow. I mean, I had even retailers, I, I gave them uh, the Alan Silberstein watch and they didn't sell it. And they sent it back saying, I, I thought they have sold it like everybody else, but like six months after I received the watch back saying, I cannot sell this watch. Okay. And at the same time on Chrono, on Chrono, on, on the same time on Chrono 24, I already sold double of the, of the retail. <laughs> and, 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 you know, like, and I was like, it, it, can't, it can't be possible. You know, it, it, it cannot be that. We still have people in our ecosystem that are so unaware of what's going on. But but again, to say this, I, th I think that yes, there was uh, discomfort, but discomfort is 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 the best uh, environment to create and evolve and and take uh, take um, risks. There was discomfort, but also it was a, it was not to an extent that it was blocking. And uh, basically, they trusted me. And I must say, this is something that I was really, really uh, happy with, is that, that basically, even though they didn't understand it or not necessarily see the potential of it, they said, OK, well, we trust you. Uh, I think there is also a true challenge on that, on that first collaboration is price-wise. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Sure. I used to make your more uh, expensive watches, but uh, I share uh, one vision with Manuel is the future of what Swiss watchmaking is for a big part, our ability to provide the best uh, quality innovation design-wise uh, watches under 5,000 Swiss francs. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. <laughs> and, I totally agree. And the real problem we are facing is the some people, critics, retailers are so conservative. They are trying to find watches with the same finish as Patek Philippe, Poinçon Genève, under 5,000 Swiss francs. We have to create a new uh, level of quality and innovation uh, to fit at that price point, because you have everything at that price point. And I think it was quite challenging for Manuel and I, is try to, um, to make the best balance. It was, a, a it was a try. And in fact, with the triptych, we had a chance to, uh, to go uh, in depth in that approach to see exactly what might be the future uh, for fun uh, Swiss watch, watches based at that entry price. I, I don't like entry price. This is a, 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 a democratic price. price, let's say this one. Yes, exactly. And also uh, you could, I'm very happy I tell you frankly, because many people call me or mainly because uh, now I'm, <laughs> I'm reaching my uh, third generation of Anasil Borshan watches. Sometimes I studied with the, the father, then the son, and now the grandson and daughter. And uh, I discovered that many people were very uh, interested in that offer of uh, Louis Era with my uh, style and design for a very simple reason. They could afford him them. But yes, totally. And, and this is so important for the next generation of watch consumer as well. Right? And exactly. It's a way to educate yeah. them and also to uh, open uh, <clears throat> doors and mine to a modern uh, style and contemporary design in watchmaking. Uh, if I have to name one of my uh, former masters, like Gérald Genta did with a very conservative brand I don't want to mention, uh, decades ago. So actually, yes. uh, Manuel says something uh, uh, I would like to point out is uh, about timeless design. Let's say that I'm not trying to look back at the past and to uh, make a copycat on, on the vintage watches. This is a big trend, actually. I say I'm following my own path of creation. And timeless, that, that means I, I, I don't have to refer to, let's say, for me, since I'm not from the watch world, I'm coming from the architecture and design world, uh, movements, a case, hands, dial, it's just brushes and canvas for a painter. I'm acting as an artist. So give me the elements, the components, plus colors, and, uh, and after it's quite challenging. But the, this first collaboration was on a certain way a test, Manuel will uh, speak about that, but the success uh, convinced us that there was a future for a true uh, collaboration in, uh, with, a, I would say, a capsule collection, the triptych. But let's talk about the triptych, because this is a really interesting one. It's a beautiful uh, collection of watches. I mean, they're so cool. Um, but it was also a big departure, right? So for the first time, you're not using the round, as you put it, neat case that was um, uh, being used by the brand, but you've created an all new design for the case, um, and which also allows you to have a much greater emotional impact for the watches. I, I love these, this case, incidentally. I think it's, it's super cool. So maybe, guys, can you tell me a little bit about, like, did you start from, I mean, clearly you must have started from, you know, the, the, the drawing board and started to put together something that you thought would be really cool and fresh and modern from a case perspective. Well, um, maybe, maybe quickly before that. I mean, at the, at the beginning, we, we had to use what was there on stock. So, so the, 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 I, I was forced to give a limitation to Alain to say, okay, let's do the collaboration, what we call the collaboration on our core piece, which is the regulator on some of the existing uh, cases and movements and uh, with the opportunity to redesign the hands, the dials, sometimes the crown. This was the case for Alain. Then we, we did a new classical line, which is much stronger, which is our solid uh, collection for also for our, uh, I would say, simple dis display or, or uh, wholesale collection. And then we asked, for instance, um, 
Vianne to work on this first, also to uh, to to really you know to, to have a certain efficiency because at the end of the day we're still in the price segment. We we need to 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 be able to come on the market with the best value proposition possible, and that that obviously is only possible if we do certain synergies and and uh, optimize certain elements within our collection and. And, uh, you know, uh, Namal Dal or Kyoshe Dal will be on the same case, but uh, but we just we just enhance the the, the metier d'art, uh, and this is the only way we can pull, pull a watch like this for less than four thousand uh, dollars, four thousand Swiss francs. So th that was the the idea was it's an evolution within the company. Yes. I mean, we still it's not a new company. Huh? It's a company that was in a situ in a difficult situation that I turned around that finally turned around this year uh, took me uh, 18 months to turn it around but now we start to have the more opportunity more uh, freedom more means to go faster to go quicker to go larger and one of this idea from the beginning was to say okay it's there's a collaboration but i'm going to go further and for me the idea from the beginning onwards was to say we do this triptych as a solid base for our classical collection the, the, the small second, the regulator, and the one push chrono. And then we, we give, uh, in a collaborative uh, logic, the possibility of either designing a regulator as a collaboration or create a capsule uh, where these three elements, this triptych, is reinterpreted by, uh, by uh, the person we work with, in this particular case, obviously, Anna. And, uh, and it's, I would say it's a logical evolution. And, and I said to Alain, okay, now we have to work on the triptych. I give you carte blanche. We have these three movements. And I want you to, 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 to reimagine a collection, a triptych collection um, around these three models. And obviously, as Alain is Alain, he had to come up with the two nice idea that we could not throw overboard, which was the day date. So the small second has become the day date. So we, we did an exception, uh, which we probably, and I'd say we did an exception. We'll do the exceptions anyway when, 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 it's, when it's good enough. But um, I, I, that was, I would say, the only, um, uh, the only idea that I gave Alain. I said, look, let's try to enhance the, the, this, do the, this capsule with these three watches. Because from my beginning onwards was to say, okay, I want to have a collector's box. I want to put the watches into. It, it was not. It was not just the idea of selling one watch. It was creating uh, a, a set as well. It was for me something important. And um, it was more or less this. And I said to Alain, okay, dials. We know we you have this. The way we did it, uh, this is perfect. Let's try to keep it somehow. But now give. Give give me something in terms of case casing or cases that is give as me more. Give me more. <laughs> exactly. And and that that was it. I mean that was probably it. The only thing I I insisted on was the bracelet. I wanted to have this. Uh, uh, I love the bracelet. Uh, this apple. I, I that that's been my dream for for a long time. And I say uh, maybe it cannot quote it. It's the apple bra bracelet more or less. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, but it's uh, I have that on my watch as well. That I use for running. It's yeah. the perfect. It's the perfect daily use bracelet. It's super comfy. It's it's just the great. So I insisted to have this because, we're, bracelet wise, we we were still a bit um, something we still needed to improve. So yeah. my, my my thing was to say, okay, these are the three movements. You only pick two and put another one. Okay, uh, keep the identity we have built in, in, in the design. And I mean, I want to have this bracelet, whatever it takes. So so that was. The only constraint. But oh. you know, let's and for, yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I love that bracelet, and I think it perfectly suits this watch. And it also makes the watch feel really modern. But I mm -hmm. love the design of this case, and I love the design of it because, in some ways, it's so logical, right? It's so Walter Gropius like that you feel like it should have already have existed, but it didn't, right? Because basically, you have everything for a case brought to the bare minimum. So you've got the round dimension, you know, for the case. And then you've got a form that looks like a tonneau, but it's just a skeletonized, it's a skeletonized lug. And there's mm -hmm. beautiful use of grade five titanium for that element, which can be high polished and contrasted with the grade two, which is, you know, sand blasted. I mean, uh, Alan, tell us about this case design. One of my master used to say a great design lies on uh, simplicity. And in fact, I started on the uh, years 2000 to work on uh, sidebars. Because for me, we have two 
different function for uh, for watch case. One is to to hold the movement dial the, the time. So this is a container, a cylinder uh, shape, very uh, simple. And for me, uh, lugs are. Uh, it's not the perfect answer because the, the real uh, combination is, uh, let's say, strap attached, bracelet attaches, uh, a part of the watch case. So uh, I designed a watch years ago called Carvan and after also a Chrono Tiger, where I used to have two uh, sidebars. It was my first experience. And I love the, 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 the impression of a flying case. Let's say there is no attachment on the case, which is just hold, held by two uh, sidebars or brancard in French. And uh, also uh, it was for me a quite challenging approach to create for Luera a, a specific case which uh, uh, may be very versatile as far as uh, movements. So it's also a, 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 a teaching of design. We could have this type of movements. We could have over movement or over function. I will mention it. But let's say I try to make this uh, watch case the most <coughs> versatile, uh, stating that Manuel and I, we do love the apple strap, just to get. And as far as I'm concerned, I hate the buckle. Buckle is something uh, which I, I, you see, I have one here, but each time it's hurt you on the yes. most sensitive part of your wrist. Yes. And just for your information, the very first fashion watch I designed on uh, 1987 was a clock watch. And I already had this sort of uh, uh, <coughs> strap on the rubber, but uh, with the clasp uh, on the side. So uh, when uh, Manuel told me, uh, <laughs> talked to me about the Apple, uh, I said, there is no thing new under the sun. And, but the, the real novelty, the, the, the real breakthrough of the Apple strap is the mesh, the nylon mesh, which is amazing comfort when you are doing sports on uh, your climate with a humid and hot climate. Yes. No sweating, it's easy to uh, to clean. This, this is for me one of the most the material, the nylon mesh is one of the most comfortable, uh, specifically the way the, the one we chose, which is but <clears throat> if you already uh, uh, try it on Apple or uh, watch it over, this is something I think is also a door open to the future, but there is not so much creation in uh, watch straps and bracelets. And uh, for me, actually, this is why I'm working on sidebars uh, from watch case. So let's say uh, the, uh, the future is to find new combination between how to maintain a watch uh, case on a bracelet or straps. And uh, for me, the future is a true, true challenge to find a bracelet, uh, titanium bracelet, comfortable, and this is not so easy. <laughs> and when you're, when I will overcome all the problem, uh, technical uh, problem, I will go on that path. But until now, uh, I've, this is a true sports watch from now, for now. And this is not uh, related to the past. I don't care not to have a pilot watch with a uh, natural leather or, uh, <coughs> I don't know, uh, uh, chicken peas, uh, leather, vegan, whatever. <laughs> it's, uh, it's for every day, easy. Uh, and <laughs> Hey, let's do it. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Bravo. Well, as I said, the watch is fantastic. So I, I guess the last question I have, and maybe this is a question for you, Manuel, is so what will the future of Louis Ira be? Because this collaboration that you're doing with Alain clearly has to remain for the long term because it's so good. Will Louis Ira become a bit like a mini opus, you know, or opus for, for more accessible for the new generation? Yeah. Well, that, that's a bit the idea of this, uh, of these collaborations we do. I mean, it, it's not going to be uh, Alain, sorry, Alain, uh, you know this very well. Uh, it, it's, it's an overall strategy. We want to be a laboratory brand, a collaborative brand. We want to be a modern contemporary brand. We also don't have any CEO in our company. We basically have a management team. So we want to tackle all, I would say, fundamentals uh, of 
how people would like to work or interact in, in the company as well. And okay, we did with Alain, with Vianney, which was a big success as well. Um, I have already five other watchmakers in the pipeline. Um, the, some of the first probably going to hit November, uh, November or December. Nobody will expect that one to come and uh, because it's just on the far other uh, uh, scope of what is possible. Uh, but we're also moving into architects. Uh, I have the first collaboration with an architect that we will launch at Art, uh, Basel, uh, Miami. We wanted to launch it initially at the, the design fair in Milan, but obviously all these, uh, the COVID has changed our plans quite uh, substantially in terms of launch events. So we'll do our Basel, uh, Miami, basically Basel, uh, end of September. And uh, then we have uh, already two contemporary artists, one of them, being at Gagosian, so we're not using the usual uh, artists that you find in the watch industry, which are, I would say, semi-known artists, but we really go for the very uh, influential artists, um, which have made major museum shows. So there's one, one, one is signed already for a man, and we also start women's collection with women. So oh, wow. basically, uh, the idea for us is to say, okay, why should we do ladies' watches that are probably uh, not um, done by man, triggering uh, uh, man or whatever, uh, that just are out of the, the, the logic. So we, we, we start our women's collection where basically the watches are designed by women for women, uh, yeah. uh, but influential women. So this is uh, the third element of the collaborations we do. So contemporary artists. Um, uh, by, by the way, the, the, the designers, I, I found the, the watch super cool, are also the ones who do, who, who, and this is my little, um, my little uh, attention to, to, to the biggest uh, partner in the watch industry. So they're also the ones who did the Rolex concept of their boutique. So I found this pretty funny that we work with, with, the, with the interior designers of the Rolex boutiques, but they also work quite a lot with LVMH. Quite an interesting company, by the way, and very interesting creative people. And then the fourth element, and this is an important element for me, is what I call the, uh, the watchmaking ecosystem. Look, at the end of the day, pretty much everybody who has something to tell, something interesting, um, is more than welcome to collaborate with us. Uh, we, we have no specific limitations. Uh, we just want to have cool products. The most important for me is that it fits into a... <clears throat> into a I would say an aesthetical uh, frame uh, and obviously in a price frame because that's the most important. We want to really offer a uh, quite strong value proposition. And then we're going to continue with Alain um, because uh, not necessarily too quickly, but some, maybe also something totally unexpected because the, the, the idea of the brand is we want to stay unexpec unexpected, cool, collaborative, uh, dynamic, and desirable. Cool. Actually, I have one last question. Uh, uh, and this one is for you, Alain. So my, my favorite watch, which I imagine is for a lot of people, their favorite watch is La Semaine. And I like it because instead of the day of the week, you have the face making different expressions um, from unhappy to very, very happy. At what point did you get this idea to, I mean, because I think it's great because no one actually needs a watch for telling any kind of information. Oh. So just for the emotion is wonderful. Uh, I would say it was for a very practical reason. I was, uh, each, uh, since I was working on my own company, uh, mostly in export, I used to have stock inventory with a, uh, uh, the the day in written printed in, in French and English and German. So I was so fed up to each time to to change this. I said, why not to use a sort of universal uh, symbol? And one of my daughter told me, what's about smileys? At that time, it started the uh, internet, and uh, said yes. And in fact, I started to design the the seven uh, faces. And, uh, and very seriously, I introduced them in Basel. It was quite a success. And uh, everybody was happy because they don't have to argue about the language, mostly in Asia, because in Asia, they would ask other language, and we never know. But in fact, I discovered in Italy a new way to use it. So some uh, CEO in America or on a dance floor in Italy, they used to uh, feature the mood of the day. 
So uh, I have uh, some CEOs uh, in America who use in the morning to, to enter and just without a word uh, show the watch face <laughs> to the, uh, the secretary <laughs> and this is the mood of the boss. So, and, uh, so you see, it, it should be playful, I would say. Yes. When you, uh, uh, just when this, Manet says something very, very important for me. I'm not trying to make uh, uh, crazy watches or whatever the world may be, but each time uh, I will, I'll notice a, a little smile on the face of somebody watching my watches. I did it. So, uh, <laughs> but this is something really meaningful for me. You see, watches are uh, measuring the most intimate things. Uh, this is not a normal uh, uh, manufactured product. This is something which measures the time of your life and you have uh, many, uh, many interaction with the watch on your wrist. This is, this is not the Apple watch. This is something which will, uh, maybe you'll pass on your uh, son or daughter. This is something which will last. This is a long, a long time. And each time you could uh, create some companion of your wrist, way, uh, which give you some uh, uh, good um, vibes. I love that. Absolutely. And yeah. this vib vibration uh, means something very uh, strong in my creation. Uh, it's like, uh, this is a, a true art pieces. What means, what is the art piece, whatever it is, a painting or a sculpture, even a watch, is there something which creates on you a reaction? You, you like, you, you dislike, you love, you hate, you don't know why, but there is an, uh, and this interaction is a true definition of art. And this is sometimes for me very difficult, and <laughs> Manuel knows that for years, to express. I've, when I feel at ease with the final design, after I don't know how many uh, discussions we could have together, at the end of the day, it's a true search for harmony. And, uh, uh, and the, the most difficult moment for a painter is to know at what moment he, uh, the, his painting is over. You have to stop paint. Over painting is over design. And uh, we have to, and sometimes I need uh, the eyes of uh, Manuel and his uh, true artistic uh, feeling to to know that uh, first I'm on the right direction and second I have to stop <laughs> because sometimes and uh, yeah to, I agree on this Alan <laughs> you, you agree I think <laughs> I, th I think I think what way uh, at the end what really made this successful is that somehow we on one side there was a, f a lot of uh, freedom given on the other side I think Alan was also listening when I told him. I think this is too much. Stop here. Put that. I think right. what really made the difference is that this is a real collaborative piece in the sense that we really collaborated on all the things very intensively together and listened to each other and, and, and exchanged. It was not like, oh, hi, Alain, design me a watch. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Or, hi, Alain, design a watch, but please make it look like a Richard Mille or a Panerai. Uh, Don't even think. Or, or something else. Um, it was really, and, and I think it's, it's this yes. element of a real collaboration. We really collaborated together in a very, very, uh, I would say, very efficient way. And the fact that we trusted each other and that we also had the experience from the past and that we, again, I think, share a lot of sensibilities when it comes to art, design, architecture, which we actually, both of us, somehow uh, privileged to watches. Um, I mean, we're more sensitive to arts and design and architecture than sometimes we are to watches. Yes. Um, helped, helped us uh, a lot because we, we, we could talk, um, you know, we, we, we were not talking watches, we were talking uh, artistic creation. And I think that made a lot, made a lot of difference. Well, cool. I mean, you guys have certainly created something very special. All right, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day and thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. -bye. Bye.